Um, the creative industries are on a real knife edge right now. We know that thousands of creative businesses and jobs have already been lost, and the, the pandemic is going to affect all different parts of the creative ecosystem. The music industry, and we've got a situation where where live performance is is, is, is still not not happening because We're of the see social huge distancing. Swathes of our infrastructure to estimate now, it could be something like 900 million could be lost to the live music sector this year as a result of um, the, the the devastating impact that the, the pandemic yeah, we've already is, is seen having. Um, I think it's very bleak. I mean, there's this evidence and research that came out today, which indicated that around about 50% of the the second could shrink by 50% um, uh, this this year, which would be Darling! Kiwi! What a pleasant surprise! (laughs) Shouldn't you be wearing a mask? I've got a mask, darling. Don't worry about that. I'm happy to wear it to stop the Rona, but I had to take it off because I kept scaring little children. Just went past a bus stop on my way here and there was a man with his little boy. He took one look at the mask and he literally wet himself. So, what are you doing here? Celebrating, darling, celebrating. Celebrating. The first closing of theatres since 1665. Oh, who have you turned into? Oliver Cromwell or... Quentin Lex. Ooh, Oliver's news. <gasps> Oliver, Oliver, never before has a boy given more. How can you afford champagne? Furlough. Rishi's paying for it. Furlough. Keely, we're actresses. We're unemployed. Unemployed. It's, it's a relative word. I've never seen Dame Benedict Cumberbatch stacking shelves at Asda. Do you know what furlough means? Of course! Rishi sends everyone a cheque in the post. Any champagne glasses? This is a studio theatre in Croydon. By the way, I'm not just celebrating, I'm self-vaccinating. Oh yeah, no, and there was me just thinking you were really thirsty. Trump's hydrocoxylocan, well it doesn't work, so I've turned to champagne. Everyone knows that alcohol kills germs. Doctors dip their what's in it before an operation, don't they? So, you're telling me you're drinking champagne to stop you getting the coronavirus? Does it work? Do I have COVID-19? No. Well, there's your proof. Keely, what are you doing here? And what did you mean by Oliver's news? The culture secretary. Dear little Oliver Dowden. (laughs) The culture secretary. The last time Oliver Dowden paid to be in a theatre, he was probably getting his appendix out. 1.57 billion for theatres, darling. That's what he said. So, where is it? Where's what? Our share of the 1.57 billion. The front room space is a theatre, isn't it? Are we not entitled to some of that money? I think I'll book a trip to the Bahamas with mine. And, 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 he said that theatres will be reopening again at bloody last. I'm an actress. I need an audience. The public needs to see me. I bet half the deaths from bloody COVID-19 are my fans expiring because they haven't been able to see me on stage. They adore me, darling. They adore me. Only open-air theatres can reopen. The front room space isn't an open-air theatre. 
We can just open the doors. There's air out there. A theatre cannot reopen if it has a roof. Well, get rid of it then. I mean, what's more important, me or a bloody roof? It's an indoor theatre. What if it rains? What about the electricals or the mixing desk? <laughs> I need to get back on stage. I need to be adored. Maybe we can do a live stream performance. I need an audience. What are we supposed to do? Have computer monitors sat on every seat. See our audience watching us from tiny little square boxes. Well, at least you can't catch coronavirus from a face in a box. No, you can't. No. You can't. No, you can't. Stuff social distancing, Meg. I've got a brilliant idea and it's as hot as my knickers. Fuel, fuel, 